Pray. A spoon crossed with a fork is a spork. Our lab has successfully crossed a spork with a spoon. With your funding, we could breed hybrids in proportions corresponding to any binary fraction. You're toying with powerful forces here. We know what we're doing. Los Angeles, California, May 10th, 2014. 134707. Houston promises we'll have the funds in the morning, as Thiesham keeps saying, as if that erases as earlier the funds haven't arrived or erases the no, not yet answering Anwar's, then the check is as good as good, or erases the much earlier, I have your check in hand. Stop saying Houston, Anwar sighs. It's not the city, it's the company, it's one man. I'm sorry, where is he? Calling us back. You spoke to him? To his assistant. I assume it's his assistant, though I've never spoken to this one before. For the last 15 or 20 minutes, Anwar and Estisham have paced inside the glass house, one of the few conference areas on the floor, dead center, relatively soundproof, if transparent, discussing Olin winter nodes, known mainly as Cosimo, venture capitalist originally from Ukraine, supposedly working out of Houston and Wilmington, though he happily implies multiple homes elsewhere, everywhere, even if his forever concern comes down to one thing, his company, dead rowboats. Cosimo came out of nowhere when Blitzball had, briefly, shown interest in their game, or rather the dynamics, mechanics, and, of course, fun factor gameplay, Estesham, Talbot, Glasgow, and Anwar had originally started off with Epic's Unreal Engine, figuring to license it, before Mephisto had come along and suggested otherwise, along with inquiries by the likes of writer designer Sami Yarvi, rumored Max Payne, Alex Wake, Wake, Alan Wake, Arndt Jensen at Play Dead Limbo, and even local rumored Gil Elbaz that had made no sense to Anwar, except the money part, Glasgow's point. After Cosimo slash dead rowboats got involved. The rest seemed transformed into hearsay, the superpositioning of all possibilities giving way to this wave function collapse that was a man no one had met or given S.E. Stamp Shem's reportage even spoken to. Anwar can only keep from kicking himself, hands clasped before him, as if hands could have anything to do with stomping feet, stopping feet, for making money realer than it ever was though hands keep wanting to pull out the check again, as if to demonstrate to eyes that this money is real. The money will be there, Anwar. This is just a glitch, Estisham says, sliding to the floor. We need to get Cosimo on the phone. Anwar doesn't take out the check, but does make the mistake of looking at his phone, his headache returning or an awareness of what never left. Should have kept his hands clasped, even, if, even as he recognizes, too, that getting Cosimo on the phone and hearing whatever assurances will prove nothing. The proof of the lie is not the lie in the words. The proof of the lie is in the pattern, which needs no speech. Voicemail full. Missed calls, 314. Text messages, 6,999. Regarding emails, 30,653 spam messages alone. There's no way to tell if his own wife called. Maybe even Cosimo, the man does have all of their numbers. Or Enzio, again, in reference to a freelance gig regarding Cataplist. One close call already barely averted. Who else? Old friends, welcome strangers, the ghosts of his parents. Why not? Again, like some awful chorus. Good! Insert here whatever is good, really, as a stare might say, so long as it's real, if even real is good, or good is real, consequential at least, seriously. How about gracious? What had Mephisto been thinking? And that was the most troubling part, because Mephisto is always thinking, thinking beyond thinking, even if there remained this constant suspicion on Anwar's part that one day, Thinking upon thinking must lead to a failure to think altogether. Isn't that what happened to the savant brother of Xanther's friend, Farouk, a.k.a. Klee? Anwar keeps forgetting meaning to ask Xanther about Finney's. What happens sometimes to the brilliant ones? 
Not that Mephisto was only about pranks and poor judgment. Without him, neither he nor Esthetium would be this close to transitioning their game from development into a profitable future. Mephisto had time again, by way of subversion, subversion later Git, passed along suggestions and invaluable additions. Concerning the code compromising their game, Mephisto was the one who had originally prized them from Unreal 4 in order to commit to Unity, though of late has been urging them to move still further toward a game engine of their own, as if this small lot were able to produce on their own the required hundreds of thousands of lines, millions even, of code for a decent RPG. Anwar is lucky to eke out 30 good lines a day. Of course, Mephisto so good he can do it all in three. Mephisto had even urged Anwar to explore inventing a new language when commenting out some of Anwar's code, including his comments within a classic Mephisto Easter egg. The better the language, the better the engine. See Quenya, Klingon, Ithquil. See Anwar? Of course, Mephisto was a madman with not enough energy to overwhelm any engine, not to mention language. Hadn't he already invented his own language? Reword? Anwar's MET didn't even rate as a pet project. How then could this larger project, M-O-O-W-K, ever compare to Mephisto's grand desire to code an instrument by which any timid heart might experience for an instant the sublime music of time? Granted, Mephisto had been barely 20 and probably high when he wrote that, though still later urging a commit commitment to that which was forever beyond encompassment, beyond games, beyond restart, beyond reboot, beyond reckoning. Anwar will stick with M-O-O-W-K, which he can't even get up and running for his daughter. M-O-O-W-K, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, a show Anwar enjoyed in the 70s on NBC, Mephisto Online. Long live Marlin. Marlon Perkins, D. 1986. Who always proceeded that most dangerous mouse forever set on achieving immortality. The wall had recently agreed, even if Mephisto had remained noticeably silent on this decision, to change the name to the more user-friendly, is still somewhat obscure, Paradise Open. Why Paradise Open? Xanther asks as soon as he walks over. Xanther, you described paradise this morning as a perfect, peaceful place. Without death, Xanther cries. Anwar smiles, sitting down in front of the console. Still Glitchville on the latest PO, Lasko informs him. Nonsense. You were um, going to, like, tell me the origin of, like, where the world came from word, but then we got interrupted. You are correct, daughter. Anwar says, opening Visual Studio. Do you know the entomology of paradise? Xanther asks Talbot. Etymology, Anwar corrects. Entomology concerns bugs, which we're dealing with now, Glasgow adds, in a computational, metaphorical sort of way. I bet Mr. Google knows, Talbot answers. You're so goofy, Talbot's very young, very blonde girlfriend giggles. Let's keep him out of this, Anwar says. Xanther already knows about the prefix peri. Like paradox? Interesting. Para means beside. Spellings here make this a little tricky. Think of para in paradise as more like peri in perimeter. Around! And to think my dad just drank beer, Glasgow laughs. Excellent, daughter. The rest supposedly comes from an old Iranian language with the root meaning wall. A rounding wall? Or a surrounding wall? That's paradise? Sounds like a prison, Glasgow adds. It meant an enclosed garden or in a protected place. So why, I mean, what's the reason for paradise open? Don't look at me, Talbot shrugs. For now, daughter, I'll leave that puzzle to you. The screen sharpens into frames of scrolling code. Wow, I'll never understand that stuff. Sure you could. Onward types, toggles, and returns, 
commands, and lines, soon in place, soon enough replaced with an image of tall grass, frozen, and a pale blue sky above, also frozen. No puzzle now, Xanther smiles. Image subsidized language, Anwar murmurs, switching back to the code. But at what cost? Talbot turns to Glasgow. My folks didn't think I could even speak English. Actually, most people in Florida don't even speak English. Kid, you're lucky to have such a dad, Glasgow tells Xanther. Like, um, I don't know that, Xanther sasses back. Before bed, he reads me all sorts of stuff. Once from this book, I Lion, Anwar too touched to correct her, even if there had been a mistake, which was pretty adult, like pretty violent. At least Xanther knows it was a mistake. Anwar only thought to pick the Iliad in order to frame a career like Dove's in terms of a long historical perspective, forgetting, mind a little slippery, just how visceral and bloody Homer could get, she would have been better served if Anwar had stuck to recounting Muhammad's victory over the Quash when occupying Mecca in 630 instead of arms open arms. In how many ways has Anwar already failed in the raising of this brave and remarkable child? At least this compiled version is still a debug build. Anwar tried a few alterations, but P.O. continued a glitching stick, once requiring another reboot. Then, just as Anwar was about to grab the prototype, crude polygon movement, or even a promo disc, ample action but with the interactivity, screenshots and clips, Talbot spotted the problem. Even, if his, even in his state of sloshiness, the celerity of his analysis astonishes Anwar. Celerity would be a good word for Xanther too, from cellar meaning swift, kin to accelerate, on top of it reminding him, probably by way of a French permissible seal of sky, swiftness always on display there, however spurious, by wind, light, and blue. Function load area, area name, local area, savannah underscore north, file equals savannah underscore north xwl, script equals savannah underscore north dot x s c position equals x equals zero y equals a hundred savannah east underscore e savannah underscore east equals file equals savannah underscore east dot x w l script equals savannah underscore east dot x s c position equals x equals a hundred y equals zero savannah underscore south equals File equals savannah underscore south dot xwl. Script equals savannah underscore south dot xsc. Position equals x equals zero. Y equals negative 100. Savannah underscore west equals file equals savannah underscore west xwl. Script equals savannah underscore west xsc. Position equals x equals negative 100. Y equals zero. For k, v in pairs, areas, do, if k equals area name, then load asset, v file, v dot file, v dot pos dot x, v dot pos dot y, load script, v dot script, return. See below savannah underscore south, after the pos, that x there should be lowercase. Talbot was born and raised outside Jacksonville, if raising is what you'd call it, by two parents who warned their child, children to avoid alligators and not drink until after sundown while they went off to tend their pot farm, which they mostly smoked, paying for large carton cereal boxes and cases of condensed milk with food stamps. Talbot had discovered two things simultaneously. Computer games were a refuge, and so were numbers. According to the stocky man, proud of his mullet, wife beaters, and illegible tattoos, strung along his forearms in every shade of ink except black and blue. It was a truck driver at 11 p.m. in McLenny who was willing to buy beer if anyone could call out the sales tax on a case of Coors, which Talbot had done easily for a case, six-pack, and bottle, who, impressed by the boy, had asked what he liked more than beer, girls or weed, to which Talbot had responded, computer games. You're lucky then, the truck driver had said. Computer games are made up of numbers driving off without buying anyone, even himself, any beer, which supposedly Talbot had lost interest in by then, because he, though he always knew he was good at numbers, silly as it may have seemed, 
He had never made the connection between numbers and games. Talbot was determined to remake himself in all ways different from both his parents, though smoking pot every day was one habit of theirs he had been able to eschew. Anwar had nothing against the quieting effects of marijuana, but had noticed, over the years, as Talbot smoked more and more, that his friend's paranoia had grown. No question the drug backgrounded the interferences of certain neurotic emotional hazards, which allowed for greater stress-reduced focus, but over the length of time, the benefits of useful connectivity also resulted in a curious uptick of spurious connectivity, justified by only the frailest filaments of association and that feeling, a phrase Talbot had been using more and more, my spider sense, i.e. a sting-happy spider settling on the back of my frickin' neck for BLDs, breakfast, lunch, dinner, Xanther later explained. Even now it was evident with this off-the-cuff remark, Problem, problemo solved unless we're facing deeper issues involving stellar wind. Or this odd veer. Anwar, you know about the clips, right? I'm sorry, video clips? Like clip four. I don't believe so. Anwar, unable to avoid catching Glasgow, look away. Another sign that Talbot is about to descend down one of his paranoid rabbit holes where the rabbits are all dead thanks to the thing that eats all rabbits that never quite comes into view. As Astisham has described it before, who is himself not entirely immune to grand paranoia, paranoid spec speculations, not that Anwar hasn't got caught in that war, war in two. Fortunately, a low dose of paroxetine exposed it as just lumpy dirt in need of sunshine. Likely, Mephisto is the greatest offender, though his disease has more to do with the sheer delight in the way he finds the most disparate elements can reach, span, and connect four friends bound together by paranoia or rabbit imaginations. Glasgow seems to have no such tendencies, but still enjoys his share of Ludlum in certain sci-fi thrillers, not to mention Talbot when he's on a good jag sometimes. The man? The kid? Talbot continues, while tinkering with the code, hunting for tedious errors. Or Toland Us, Zeke Riv Rilvergale, the girl Audra, Willow Rule, Willow Rue, and now this other guy. Relic Tarnan. What happened to him? What? Not kid friendly. Anwar winces. Tell me, please. Xanther immediately starts up. No. Anwar says, stern enough to check both Xanther and Talbot. Too stern? Browns say yes. Good news. Sloppy scripting seems the only problem. Anwar had had a tinge that maybe something deriving from their in-house content creation tools, like Yugen, Yabari, or He's and Boney, had been the problem, or worse, something that was the result of his own work. The Unity engine appears more than fine, Though, that includes Anwar's module. No need to take an hour to recompile the beast or embarrass himself any more in front of his daughter. Anwar's proud of MET. Inventive, concise, even cunning. But for all it does in the name of AI, it does nothing in the name of true AI. Estesham and the lads just call it that, as do most engineers, including Anwar himself. The AI part. MET has zero to do with self-sustaining awareness, Breitenberg had taught Anwar this years ago. Complex behavior implies complex cognition. Conversely, simple behavior implies simple cognition. Neither, though, are necessarily true. Still, his AI part is fun. Xanther settles on Anwar's knee, long arms dangling around his shoulder, light as a bird. One problem faced by many games comes down to interaction, Anwar tells her. The dominant first-person interaction too easily reduces the shoot or seize. What about puzzle games, then? You know, like when you have to figure out stuff? Like Limbo? Excellent point, daughter. While less about actions and still necessitating more thought, question-answer gaming scenarios are still limited to specific answers and tend to relate more to the environment. Organizing objects, generating correct numbers, uncovering re productible patterns. Minecraft? Glasgow chimes in. As Glas knows, Minecraft was in part an inspiration. That game willingly explores the pleasures of just assembling things, the equivalent of computational Legos or dollhouse. 
Anwar knows that Xanther has played a little of Minecraft with beautiful results. That said, the interactions remain material. Xanther shifts uncomfortably on his leg, listening still, again haunted by another endless string of questions, eyes fixed on the screen as Talbot continues to enter corrections. The reason for so many FPS may have less to do with the penchant for violence than with an ability to program more complex encounters. Oh, like between people? Between player and machine. What programmers crave are more advanced ways of negotiating with computational generated figures and environments. Negotiation is the operate, operative word. And at this stage of the game, creating personas ca capable of mimicking human behavior, even on a child's level, is impossible. Animal behavior, however, Xantha looks back at Anwar, eyes wide now with wonder. You mean like a dog? Or a lion? A hyena? How about an owl? Really? Talbot restarts the game again, only to watch it again hang, though Anwar's can, Anwar can see the possibility still hanging, wondrously, before Xanther's eyes. Hiccups aside, Anwar remains very proud of his part in the creation of this game, wondrous possibilities hanging before even his eyes. It seems obvious to him that dead rowboats would want nothing more than to fund Paradise Open, or if not Cosimo, then play dead or even Blizzard, EA, or some Zaibatsu with Miyamoto's blessing to boot. The concept was good. The work was good. The results appall appealing. Paradise open, still not open, Talbot grunts. One table over, a stranger, likely a friend of an intern here, unlikely even 25, had started to veer and lean in on Winchester. Talbot's focus didn't shift. Are you here with your father? The kid, as a last-ditch effort, had the Temerity to suggest. No, Winchester shook her head, apply, applying another layer of glossy pink lipstick. But sometimes I call him daddy. Anwar? Except Anwar only hears the voice after Xanther tells him there is one, whispering in his ear. Dad, some lady wants you. Carmen Sacco is one of the interns, ringlets like copper, an expert at digital marketing with an MBA from UCLA's Anderson School of Mar Management who was tired, hired on after her early on declaration that she wanted in on the ground floor of something heading super cloud level. I think Eddie wants you, Carmen motions toward the glass house, where Estesham is indeed signaling for him. Also, I just wanted to add how excited I am. You deserve this me measure of faith. I'm proud I measured up as someone who now counts a staff. Anwar smiles. Doing, doing everything to keep his lips from giving away his distress, their nervous stance, childhood ticks. Have you met my daughter? Xanther, this is Miss Sacco. Carmen doesn't miss a beat. He can hear her as he walks away, going on about bangs and how beautiful Xanther's eyes are. They're different colors like Kate Bosworth's, like David Bowie's. Thanks. It's like called heterochromia. heterochromia. Bowie, though, may have... Aunt Annie Socoria, which means just one of his pupils is bigger, and that only makes the color of the iris look different when compared to the other. Your hair is so beautiful. I love hair like that. How would you define a game engine? We'll see, Estesham says, closing the door, sealing them within the glass house again. You spoke with Cosimo? Left messages. A lot of messages. Anwar sighs. But I did speak with Paul Buxy, his CFO. We're fine. Do I need to apply for a job at Trader Joe's? Buxy told me they'd be fools to lose out on this one. You and I both know he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. I do believe that. I do too. So my advice, buy Xantha her dog. Whatever your family needs, I'm counting my own chickens hatched. We are celebrating. Which is when, when Anwar hears it inside the glass house, though there is nothing else inside there except for two non-believers. Did you hear that? Like the tiniest squeak. What? Estesham asks. Anwar hears it again, like the tiniest cry for help. Now it's outside the glass house, out on the main floor, in need? Immediate need, no question. There? Estesham hears nothing. 
Beyond the glass doors, Anwar finds the expected din of music, laughter, chatter, increasingly more drunk chatter, along with, at various workstations, warring speaker sets demonstrating the clamorous pleasures of various games. Maybe from one of the windows? Outside? In all that rain? And there it is, a third time, and loud now, louder now, much louder. Definitely outside, has to be on the ledge, definitely in the rain. Anwar struggles to raise the glass. Where does it slide open? Where are the latches? Should he call someone to help him? Oliver Glasgow and Talbot, even Carmen? Where did Estesham go? Here's a latch. The window must swing open, seeing now how it pops out from the bottom. Daddy! Xanther yells from, acro from across the room. Quick, come here! And Anwar is already on the way. Anything for Xanther, only understanding as he gets closer that a cry isn't of terror, but of excitement. Talbot fixed it! And suddenly Anwar is no longer sure what he just heard. Only looking back briefly, he didn't even manage to open the window, though he can still hear the bedlam of all that rain, drowning out even the traffic below. What else could he hear besides that, if not his imagination? Certainly nothing more than the rain, especially through a closed window. Suddenly there's a breeze, too. Weird. Who knows where it came from? Rustling papers, Carmen's red ringlets. Not a window open. Not even an AC humming. Just Xanther's big grin. Estesham joins the group then. Talbot pouring a drink on Arl Palmer. Estesham abstains from alcohol. As well as a bob for himself. Glasgow takes another beer. Onward to to sip, as well as another bob for Winchester. Cups raised. Xanther raises a happy fist. Suddenly, Onwar misses Mephisto for all the incomprehensible curiosity, curious mess that he created with his prank. Why isn't his friend here? To Mephisto, he stunningly says, and immediate, immediate echoes prove him right for saying so. Use the four arrows here. Press the space bar when you want to start. Xanther at once punches the space bar, another laugh from everyone, Xanther more eager than ever, which wouldn't disturb Anwar. It's good that she's excited and enthusiastic, were it not for one of her wildly pumping legs, her right, sometimes, though certainly not always, and certainly not even often. Signaling the onset of an event, is that what's on the immediate horizon? Anwar's breath always coming up short at just the thought. But Xanther's already flying, knowing the keys almost, before Talbot points out what they should do, very quick and very, very adept. As fast as you can, Talbot urges. Where am I going? M-I-S? Z? Xanther weaves through the high grass, dodging boulders, leaping over small trenches. She's seen this grass before, but never moved through it. Not like this S and Z, indeed. Who knows? Talbot laughs. laughs. You don't know? Not yet. Then what am I doing? Xanther asks, a little annoyed, easing up on her acceleration across the African savanna. Don't slow down. Why not? Though she's racing again. You have to evade, Glasgow chimes in. Evade? Stay clear of, Estesha adds. You have to escape, Talbot, uh, Xanther, Talbot says. Something's chasing me? Remember that blood spray? Remember, Xanther, it's still a prototype, Anwar adds now. The identities and details will come. The point is that even though you can't see it, something's pursuing you. That was the MET part, brought to life, activated by Xanther's direction, if purposely deprived of the absolute knowledge of Xanther's course, and so anticipating her dash, using various vectors and, in more than a few cases, cheats to stop her, which will happen in any moment. Something's about to catch up with you. More grass keeps parting. For some reason, digital instinct, Xanther has started to bounce left to right, left to right, continuing with a simple rhythm only to suddenly change it to left, 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 followed just as quickly by a series of right, right, rights. Then stops, stops hard, wheels around hard and fast too. Anwar is pleased to discover Glasgow has restored the panting breath at FX. What am I? Who knows, Talbot laughs again. Seriously? Well, I know I'm big enough to make that path there. Xanther eyes, as they all do, all the trampled grass she's left behind. Really, Xanther, we haven't decided yet, Glasgow adds gently. 
your prey, as Thesham finally explains. And coming down the path after me, that's the predator? If it takes that path, Anwar says. Los Angeles, California, May 10th, 2014, 142244.